In the previous videos, we have seen that the test time set instruction and the swap instruction ensure mutual exclusion and progress, but they do not ensure bounded weight. Now let's see a solution to the critical section problem using the test time set instruction, which ensure mutual exclusion, progress and also bounded weight. Here we are synchronizing n number of processes P0, P1, P2 and so on to Pn. These processes should be arranged in a specific order in an array. And each process should be associated with a weighting variable and a key variable. The weighting variable is initialized to false. Also, the global lock variable is initialized to false, showing that the critical section is free. Now, if any process wishes to enter the critical section, it should start executing the entry section code for the critical section by setting waiting variable to true and the key variable to true. And then the process should execute the test time set instruction on the lock variable. The return value is kept in the key variable. We know that the test time set instruction tests the value of lock. If lock is false, that false value is returned and lock will be set to true. If lock is true, that true value will be returned and lock will remain to be true. So if critical section is free, a false value is returned and received by the key. Thus if key receives a false value, it shows that the critical section is free. The process can enter the critical section. Else, if key receives a true value, it shows the critical section is occupied. The process cannot enter the critical section. Thus, in the entry section code, the waiting variable is set to true, showing that the process is waiting or wishing to enter the critical section. Key is also set to true, and as long as this key is true and waiting variable is true, the process will keep on waiting in this while loop without entering the critical section and by waiting for the lock variable. Any time when lock becomes false, key will receive a false value. When key becomes false, this while loop breaks and the process can enter the critical section by resetting the waiting variable to false, showing that the process is no longer waiting to enter the critical section. Consider an example. Suppose we have only four processes P0, P1, P2 and P3. The global lock variable is initialized to false showing that the critical section is free. Now suppose the process P2 needs to enter the critical section. It will set the waiting variable to true and the key variable to true in the entry section code. Now waiting of i is true and key is true. The process will execute the test time set instruction on the lock variable once. As a result, a false value is returned to the key. So in the next try, the key becomes false so the while loop breaks and the process will enter the critical section by resetting waiting variable to false. And the lock is already set to true by the test transit instruction. Now P2 is inside the critical section. While P2 is inside the critical section, suppose another process P0 needs to enter the critical section. It will execute the entry section code by setting the waiting variable to true and key to true. Now waiting of i is true and key is true. 
The process will execute the test stand set instruction once. As a result, a true value is returned to the key. Key receives a true value. So again, the while loop executes, but the key will remain to be true. So the process will keep on waiting in the while loop without entering the critical section. So if waiting variable is true and key is true, it means the process is waiting or wishing to enter the critical section, but it hasn't received a false value in its key. So it is waiting for the lock variable. And if waiting of i equals true and key is false, it means the process is waiting or wishing to enter the critical section and it has received a false value in its key. So the process can enter the critical section. Also, if waiting variable is false, a process who is in the entry section code can directly enter the critical section. Let's see how. Now the process P2 is inside the critical section. P0 is waiting to enter the critical section. Suppose P2 completed the critical section. It will execute the exit section code for the critical section. In the exit section code, P2 will scan these processes in a cyclic order. Now i equals 2. Our process is P2. So i equals 2. The total number of processes n equals 4. So the next process is i plus 1 modulus n 3 modulus 4 is 3. So j equals 3. The process to be checked is P3. Whether that process is waiting to enter the critical section? No. Waiting variable is false. It is not waiting to enter the critical section. So increment j. j equals j plus 1 modulus n. 4 modulus n. 4 modulus 4 is 0. The next process to be checked is process P0. Is that process waiting to enter the critical section? Yes, that process is waiting to enter the critical section. Now, directly set its waiting variable to false, allowing just that process to enter the critical section for this lock. Now suppose after some time P0 get the processes, it is executing the while loop waiting for the waiting variable and the key variable. Now the waiting variable is set to fall, thus while loop breaks and P0 can directly enter the critical section. So here P2 while exiting from the critical section transferred its lock to one process and that process is P0. Now suppose P0 completed its critical section, it will start executing its exit section code. It will start scanning these processes in a cyclic order. Our process is P0, i equals 0. So the next process is i plus 1 modulus 4, 1. Check process P1. Is process P1 waiting to enter the critical section? No waiting variable is false so increment j j plus 1 modulus n j equals 2 is this process p2 waiting to enter the critical section no increment j is the process p3 waiting to enter the critical section no again increment j 3 plus 1 modulus n 4 modulus 4 is 0 the next process is p0 this is the same as our current process. So stop executing the while loop. J is equal to I. The scan is over. We have reached the same process. So exit the while loop. Now we have found that there is no process waiting for entering the critical section. So now we can reset the lock variable to false. So that any new process wishes to enter the critical section can acquire the lock and can enter the critical section. This is how bounded weight is ensured by the solution. If one process exits from the critical section, instead of directly resetting lock to false, it will search this array of processes in a cyclic way. If there are processes waiting to enter the critical section, the first process encountered will be given chance to enter the critical section for that particular lock. And if no process waiting to enter the critical section, finally 
the log will be reset to false.